What's up guys, P Town by checking in. I just want to do an update video on where we stand on the uh, dual motor X52 project. Uh, not much has changed, uh, just a couple things. I've done a lot of tweaking uh, to the settings in the controller, so I'm getting some much better performance out of it. So we'll, we'll get a ride video soon. Got a new, uh, new higher top speed on the bike now with the, the changes in the settings. As you can see, I moved the, the 60 volt battery up here to the top tube as opposed to under the back seat. Aesthetically, I think it looks a little bit better, still not the best, um, but I think it's definitely better than being under the seat, at least to me. And I still got the controller and my second 52 volt battery for the rear motor in the uh, in the triangle bag. So all in all, I think it looks uh, it looks a bit better than it did with the bag hanging off the back there. I just, I just couldn't stand that. And I do have a couple different bags that I'm looking into some things that are uh, better aesthetically to hold the battery because uh, I'm still not too pleased with that even though it's better than being on the back it's still not just not the the look that I want I want something that looks a little bit better so I'm going to play around with a couple of different configurations uh, but otherwise everything's been great with the ba battery uh, I'm sorry great with the bike uh, I got the battery blender mounted back there so it can stay cool I often wonder if I could stu stuff it in there where the controller is uh, but it does produce a little bit of heat. I know the controller produces a little bit of heat and there's really no airflow in that compartment there uh, where the controller sits. So a little nervous about it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe if somebody in the comments has any experience with it, they can chime in. Uh, front motors been holding up and doing fine. Uh, I'm going to add a second torque arm, uh, just you know, rather safe than sorry type of situation. But I have one on the other side. I'm going to put one on this side. Uh, but I haven't had any problems. Nothing's loosened up. Uh, I'm not sure how many miles we have on the kit. Let's take a look really quick. Let's see how many miles we, we've put on it so far. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but 156.7 miles so far. And they've all been uh, relative, relatively trouble-free. Uh, not, nothing's rattled apart. Nothing stopped on me. Uh, yeah, just, just nothing. It's just been riding good. The one issue, I, I take that back. I did have one issue and I'm not, I have not figured out if it's with the controller or with the screen, um, with the pedal assist levels or the power levels, uh, you may or may not know, <clears throat> you can go into your settings and choose whether you have, uh, three, five or nine different power assist levels. I currently have mine set up to where I only have three. It doesn't change how much uh, power you have on the bike overall, just the, the fine tuning of the power that you get. When I was using uh, the five, which is pretty standard, anytime I would use power assist level number four, I would get a communication error that would pop up intermittently on the uh, on the screen. The bike would never stop. Everything would still be running, but I would no longer have my miles per hour and I would just have an error message on the screen. And it only happened in power level four, one, two, three, and five were all fine. It was just really odd. So I changed it to where I only have three and I don't experience that issue with one, two, or three. So I'm not sure what that's about. Again, maybe someone in the comments can chime in and let me know uh, what, what would cause something like that. It was really, really kind of odd. Uh, but other than that, I haven't had any problems. I did mention that problem to the seller. Uh, they sent me out a, another controller. Uh, I haven't bothered to install it because, uh, you know, I just you know, avoided using power level four before and now I just only have uh, the three going so it hasn't come up again. But I do have uh, another controller in the tuck just in case I need to. But I think this triangle bag from Luna works out pretty good. Uh, not a perfect fit, but it's one of the best ones I've found. And I actually got some usable storage on the side there, which which helps me out. Uh, when you know, just keep little, little knickknacks that you need. Between that and my backpack, I'm able to carry everything that I need. As far as future plans for the bike, uh, what I plan to do, there is a new controller that's available uh, for the for the rear motor. That will, uh, it's a direct replacement for the factory controller, which will be to give me a bit more power out of the rear wheel. So I have that's not going to be I, I pre-ordered it, but it won't be shipped if I'm if I remember correctly, not until November. So that's in the works. Uh, also have new handlebars. Actually, those should be coming today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mountain bike style, more of a, a flat type of handlebar. I've never really been too fond of that sweep that the handlebars have, almost too beach cruiser-esque for me. Um, so I'm going to try some different handlebars and see how I feel about those. So those will be coming up soon. 
Uh, also have a new headlight on the way. Uh, it's a Halo style headlight. Uh, should just be a direct plug and play situation. It's supposed to be much brighter than the factory one because even though I've upgraded the bulb to an actual motorcycle bulb, it's still just if I try to ride at night, I can see two, maybe three feet in front of me and, that, and that's about it. So there's just no no way I can do night riding with this light at, as it's set up. So I'm hoping that the uh, the halo light that's coming will allow me to be able to get out and do a little bit of night riding. Uh, the Shinko 241s have been awesome. Uh, it took them a while to get them balanced and, uh, you know, to get the bumpiness out of the ride. I still get a little bit of it now when I get up about 43, 44 miles an hour. Um, not sure what to do about that. I may deflate them and roll them around and get them, a, uh, see if I can get them a seat just a little bit better. But other than that, they've been great. No flats. I can corner better. I don't, I haven't lost any traction, no matter what kind of terrain I'm on. It'll be at the pavement, gravel, sand, grass. It doesn't matter. These 241s are great. And also, since they're heavier, um, I, I eliminated a lot of that front wheel spin that you see with dual motor bikes a lot. Um, I, I don't, I get a little bit, you know, if I, if I really hammer on the throttle from a, from a dead stop. Um, but nothing like it was with the stock tires. So, so sorry, I got a truck passing outside. Uh, nothing like it was uh, with the stock tires. So much better. So I'm, I'm getting all that that energy and that power is actually hitting the pavement. Um, but yeah, I've been really pleased with it, man. This this build is, is making me so happy. I, I struggle between modifying this bike and maybe just buying myself an Onyx or, or something like that. And I'm glad I went the modification route because I, I make it my own. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I know that if I added a 72 volt battery, I could easily hit 50 miles an hour. But where I am right now hitting, you know, 44, 45 is it's all that I need uh, for, for my purposes. Um, I haven't done a range test yet. Uh, so that, that'll be coming up soon, too, to see what kind of range we get with the two motors and the total of uh, three batteries. We'll see what happens. I've, that's definitely in the works. I'll throw a GoPro on and I will do some riding around town. Maybe we'll see something interesting or something cool. One other thing I am interested in finding out, I've been checking the forums, haven't seen anything yet. So if anybody in the comments you know, has an idea, this brake light functions, but it is, quite frankly, nowhere near bright enough to really be safe. So if anybody knows of a, you know, uh, either a simple swap or a, preferably a plug and play uh, tail light, you know, brake light replacement for the X52, I would definitely appreciate it. Uh, but that's it, guys. Like I said, really happy with it. We'll have a, a range test coming soon. Oh, one other thing. I'm sorry, but before I let you guys go, one other mod I'm doing. I already have the parts for. Just haven't felt like taking all this, this shit apart and take the front wheel off. But I do have the uh, 203 millimeter front rotor. I'm gonna be uh, gonna be installing that. And I, I, my braking is fine because I do have Regen turned on for the front motor also, but this rotor has always squeaked. I've changed the pads and still I get the, the squeak and the squeal when I go to stop. So I'm gonna see, hopefully changing to the bigger and a new rotor will eliminate that. But obviously I gotta you know take off the torque arm and snip zip ties for the for the motor cable etc cetera, etc cetera, to get the front wheel off just to change the rotor so it's kind of a kind of a pain but i'm going to go ahead and get it done i'll probably get that tackled here in the next day or two because i'm going to do the handlebars also so the next update uh we should have new handlebars get that wiring cleaned up some more and a new uh front rotor and maybe we'll uh we'll get a range test but dual motor x class loving it absolutely loving it no complaints, uh, ride it everywhere, it's handling everything, keeps up with traffic. I do, I just absolutely love, love what I've created here. Well, guys, please like, comment, subscribe, please share, I'm trying to grow the channel. Uh, see if I can be a part of this, this e-bike revolution happening on YouTube. So please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. P-Town e-bike, I'm out.